Hello, hello. It's Wednesday evening and time for some yellow. Um, sorry for the background noise, there's the washing machine once again going for overdrive. Um, today we have around $400 in a bankroll and I thought about should we start at PLO 10 or should we start in PLO 20 and I think we are going to start at PLO 20 but if we lose one or two buy-ins then we just have to go to PLO 10 because we, we don't want to risk the whole bankroll but I think that 30 buy-in for dropping down is, is good bankroll in this crowdfunded PLO night so we have around four or five lines before we drop to PLO 10 and I really hope that doesn't happen because we have had two or three losing sessions last week in Finnish PLO knife we made nice profit in EV bad profit in actual runnings went around I don't remember how much it was but maybe four or five buy-ins under EV so we lost three buy-ins and we were up few but it, it happens nothing we can do I've had some code today so I might be coughing a lot but let's hope it doesn't get worse <laughs> We have oh we don't have why are we not in this table boo so we are on the way to this do we want to play heads up probably are and is the same player on the other table too no it's the other regular. So let's play a few hands. Heads up, and we actually hit the cut shot on the board that hits almost every hand. So I'm going to jump back, and then we just have to think. Probably if open a bet, we have it's a half a bet. But we have a bottom bear and cut shot. So if he doesn't have two pair or better, we should have decent ish equity. And he bets half, but I don't think he ever has two pairs here when there's straight draws, last draws, and everything. So I'm going to call and I can stand on. I'm not going to turn my hand into a bluff because if I had a, well, I might have a nine then. I'm actually going to, if I had a 9-10, I would check the flop, so it does make sense. If the 9, uh, if the 8 is a 9, then I wouldn't probably check 10-9. So then it, it would be a quite bad spot to bluff. And let's wait if we can join some of the full devils. Uh, pot size bet on link spot A is high. No. And we fought the nuts on table two. Now the question is just if our opponent hit it or not. Oh, it's a deep table. Didn't see that one. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, probably as long as the opponent is 100 pp is deep, it doesn't matter. But with this really thin bankroll um i don't really like to play deep and in increase the variance unless the opponents are quite quite bad on the right table board pairs um when you close the flop he often has some kind of check then we draw or he has a flush draw or two pairs are set and when the board pairs it kind of sucks because we don't really get value from anything so we have to check and River 9 kind of helps us, it removes some combinations from his full houses, but I don't think he turns his flush draw into a bluff. 
at least often enough. But he bets 120, that is such a small bet. Uh, we block straight or so he either has a missed flush draw or has a full house. And it's even under half the pot. We really looks like a jack nine or something. I, I have to check it. No, it's a seven then. I, I have no reason why why he bet. The thing is that if he had bet any bigger, then I would have probably thought it would have been nice, nice bluff. I didn't think he would have that kind of hand in his betting range on the river. <clears throat> And I'm going to sit on some of the other tables. Uh, I'm going to sit out here on the table two because Marmota is a regular. I'm not sure how much we have edge over him in heads up because the rate is so high. So I'm going to change that one into a six max table. Yeah, we went. Three euros. It's nice. And on the left table, I can see I'm happy to play heads up. He's kind of weak player that we should have quite profitable situations. Here we have weak flush draw, no not cut shot. And when he calls the flop, he probably has something about around the king or eight. He's not going to fold it often on the turn. So definitely we need to check here and see if we hit anything. And on the river I'm not going to bluff him. We do have chats open, we have Pokerimania's chat, we have a Twitch chat, so please use them. And please be active. Use the chat, make some noise. I'm trying to make the table slightly bigger. And here I'm going to bluff, and I'm going to bet pretty big, just to make him fold, but now the thing is that if he makes a straight, he's never folding it. And I don't think he's going to bet, and then he had a pocket queens, that's, queens and chaps were Kind of the hands that I wanted him to fold because we have only a pair of tens, but it's a small portion of his range compared to what we can beat, and that's why I checked the river. Probably should have bet. The reason why we are having the coaching today, or the PO evening, is because we're going to have a midsummer festival during this weekend. So pretty much all the Finnish people are somewhere celebrating the festival. <laughs> Number one, we have the Pocket Kings. Let's see what happens. And we flop over very much of what I can see. I'm going to value with it. In his polling range, there's a ton of worse hands. And in the way, we kind of have to check back. And depending on what he does on the river, if he bets half a bond, um, our hand doesn't improve at all. If it was four or nine, I would crawl here. But now we have just an overbear, so I'm just going to float. Um, the main thing is that these kind of players can quite easily value bet some bad two pairs. Uh, white poker, three bets. We have double shooting chat. We are. Not much ahead of anyone, but I'm going to shop. We should have decent equity versus range, and there's already money in the one, and now we are actually slightly ahead. 
Let's see if he can hit something. No, he can't. Oh, he has a flash. Damn. And on table four, we dump the flop with middle player and open ender. Um, when Marmot the crawls, he shouldn't have a really strong hand. So we should have a lot of folding up with the undertaker. Uh, and he crawls and the river is kind of nasty if completes the flush. Thing is that if he doesn't have a flush, I don't think he's going to bet the river often. Like if he has two pair type of jack 10 type of hand, he's going to just bet the showdown. But if he bets, I'm quite sure he has the flush. Because on the flop, he either has the same thing queen, he's going to check it, or then he has a flush draw. And when he thinks that alone, I'm quite sure he might even have the king high flush pretty often there. And he bet such a value bet, kind of bet. <laughs> now, number one, we actually win with the pocket aces. I, dude, this guy crawls the flop with nothing. He had absolutely nothing on the flop. Only back doors. So Ziki is definitely the player we want to play with. And White Porker seems to be quite nice too. Uh, that one three died. So let's find a new one. <laughs> Um, a and green high flush draw definitely call half a pot bet. We have a draw to the second nuts. And now we have the second nuts. And Ziki is a player we are going to value bet. And I'm actually going to make a small raise. Uh, I don't think he's ever folding any flush here. And one of the options to call, I make him bet the river. But I think that when I call the turn, he shouldn't be betting any rivers without the flushes. And the reason why I want to raise the turn is if he has two pairs or sets, he's going to crawl and see if he hits the full house on the river. But if we check and he misses it on the river, he might not even call our river bet. So in his range, we make more money by raising the there. This better OO sitting on almost every table. PLO 20 regular, he's always here when we have a PLO evening. <laughs> um, if you have any questions about Porker, PLO, Finnish, Midsummer, whatever, feel free to ask. Because during the coaching, we have a lot of these situations when nothing just happens. And we have to wait for the hands. So it, it would be nice to have something to talk about during those moments and I don't have anything in mind. <laughs> um, last week in the Finnish PLO I mean, we started the evening with poker choose analyzing for one hand. Should we value at the river or check? No one said, said anything about that so I have no idea if it's something that you want to see or something that should not be done. So please give some feedback either in the chat or in the forum thread. Would you like to see some proper analyzing more? 
in the beginning of the evening or at the end of the evening or somewhere else in the forums or what. And then before I make a marginal open from UTG, but we have this ZZZZ high BPIP player, we have Boshi who seems to be a fish. So we have two passive crawl happy players behind us. So I'm going to open from UTG. I don't think any of these repellers is going to trip at me a lot when I open from UTG. And the hand is quite decent. Uh, I'm going to bet the turn for protection against King High Hand. We have the open ender, we have the flush turn, we make the flush. So I'm going to make a thin value bet. And if he raises, I'm I'm just folding. He yeah, either has has jack ten of diamonds or full house. I don't think he ever raises there as a bluff. That just doesn't make any sense. And he is 63 and 0 out of 8 hands. But we might have calls from trips, smaller flushes, maybe some small bait jack then. And that's a situation that I have seen a lot of bad players to just call with the nuts on the turn. Not sure why, but they do it and then the river they are lost when the nuts isn't nuts anymore. Um, on the number one, we've locked the chapter high flush. Um, definitely bet, and we're going to stack off against Shorty because he's going to shove any sets, any flushes. And the run route continues on table four. Uh, I'm going to call. We have just an open ender, top pair, and over pair. And now we have a set, but we block our own out. So as a standard starting point, I would have to assume that someone has a straight or a flush. Can I hit Arnie? Yes, if Arnie comes here, then I can hit him and say, run better. And I'm definitely going to check here on the before because we can get value from almost anything. So let's hope for River that bears the board. Table two, we have top where Cut shot back to a flash draw. Definitely going to call this. Don't fail. Um, Marmot the dogs quite a lot. And I'm going to call the turn. Because he has a lot of a lot of draws on his turn range. But now three nines is cut there, so we probably probably are going to lose. And the board pairs here. And he checks, so I would be expecting to see a missed king queen with the flush draw type of hand, or he has the queen nine. And he has the full house now, which is in, is in his dunking range. And here we get a call on the river. He had he had a king high flush, yes. So he made a very really small bet on the turn, half a pot with king high flush. And then called us on the river. Similar type of hands on table two and three. A uh, reason why on table two I fold and call on table three is that on level three the opener is 88 and 13. And now he checks, which kind of sucks as I. One of him to see that he's over there and I raise and he might stack off with aces easily. But now the problem is when he comes there and I would expect to see yes, aces quite often, which is the case. That's, that's the penalty you have to pay when playing out of position, the opponent might not see that. So going for check raise doesn't work. <laughs> And 
decent hand on table one, bad flop, I'm going to make half a book bet, and I would assume battery fold over 33%. So even if he continues half of the time, we still make instant profit. So I would say against almost any micro stage, micro stage player, you can see bet those flush boards with half of a bet sizing and don't have to worry about someone exploiting you. Only when they start to raise you every time, then you might change your strategy, but as, as soon as they fall every now and then, it's a super profitable. Well, Arden can visit, visit me anytime he wants. We should, should have an epic stream. Me beating Arnie out. Uh, when active and Jay Chips on a limp spot. He doesn't have a strong hand, but Jack completes every straight draw there is, so I'm just going to give up on this hand. But he's our friend. He's a good customer. <laughs> and then we just wait for something to happen. <laughs> Petrusdal asks that does it make a lot of sense to keep these English PLO knights as we basically have zero PLO players on English side? Well, it does make sense. Um, we might not have a lot of live audience we might have if we stop doing this then we will, we will never have and the other thing is that all of these videos go to YouTube and I have seen a lot of players at Poker Stars telling me on the chat that hi to everybody I like your videos or hi show person well of course now we haven't played as stars for a long time but the thing is that people watch those videos on YouTube too. They are not wasted. So they go to YouTube and there are players that like to watch them when they have time. So it's kind of thing that we want to offer some content for the English side too. Of course we, we can just raise our hands and say that English side is dead. Let's close the whole damn thing. But if we want to try to keep it open and try to increase the traffic, then we have to have content. And this is one of the contents we can have. Oops, half a pot here. And we have a blocker, but BPIP 93 blockers don't mean beep. So he can have the pot. Uh, I'm not going to raise him. It just sucks like, yeah, raise him and he snaps close with 5-6. Has happened a lot of times. So I'm just giving up. I wait until I have the nuts and then I step him off. <laughs> oh, well, had to sneeze. <clears throat> We make them both on table one, and we should have the nuts pretty much always. So let's just make a bit wet. Oh, that kind of sucks, but we have the second nuts. And I would be amazed if he has king queen or even pocket queens. He has a pocket queens, and wow. I just don't understand why someone with such a short stack decides to 
slow play on the swap when he has pretty much the nuts. But people are awesome. Yeah. I'm just going to draw with the opposite of kings. Don't want to create b3 bet 4 way pot when we are not going to flop that not be so often. So table 1 died. Unteri Tokki says that something about my nickname, probably. Meaning it's, it's nice. Thank you. And now I'm going to actually bet for just protection value from some draws, some over pairs. And where's our lobby? Oh, no one wanted to have stand for the pot. Oh, we have Seppo Talasma. Legendary character from, from one of the oldest soap operas in Finland. Oh, I love how Ziki just calls and leaves four cents behind and he doesn't fold. Oh, he had just a flush draw. <laughs> oh, I like that. I love Ziki. Oh, Detrusto is playing some high roller tournaments. Well, if, if you win the tournament, then your bankroll should be just fine. It's probably going to end. I don't know how many players there are in Omania High Roller, but I would assume that it ends somewhere in the morning. Uh, I would suppose if Dead Crystal wins that 320 tournament, I don't know how much that first prize is, but I would assume that it's at least five figures. Maybe six skippers. Not sure how many players there are, but if you win it, I would suppose that you have some crazy meet summer festival. I would if at the eve of meet summer festival, if I I would win hundred thousand dollars, I would probably have pretty wild weekend. <laughs> I'm putting chats on demo too. Uh, let's definitely open. And here we just make a bet. <laughs> oh, he calls, and now we actually have the third, fourth nut. Uh, he doesn't have aces. Uh, ace in his hand. And he's not going to fold kings or queens. So there's no point in betting. And he bets 120. He's such a tight one. Uh, I don't think he ever bets flush here. And he shouldn't have anything else. I'm going to fold checks. No, no reason to call. I'm going to assume he has pocket, queenie, well, pocket queens quite often. Often in tight players and in calling range, there's a lot of pocket pairs. <laughs> Ace is on table one. Um, I'm going to raise it up. Because then we have FPR1 with white poker and he might shove preflop. He is, he is the guy who shoved that strange rundown in the first hands. So he might gamble here. At least let's give him a chance. And this flop is quite decent. And I'm actually just going to shove. 
Because if he might go out with some kind of flush draws, he might go with worse trips, definitely. Basically, we only join two other versus pocket eights. And if he has them, he has, and when he pins, he doesn't. And no one has. So let's see if we can make something. No, we can't. Flush and higher for house. Pocket trees. We had 52 on the floor because there was the flush draw, but yeah. Couldn't hold. Yeah, that was the, um, I'm not sure how steep the structure is, but if it's a slow paced tournament, then you can sleep for five hours and then join the tournament or get some. Uh, I'm actually going to bet here because active is sort of passive on the flop. Oh, no action. Bummer. Or you can triple up in the first hands and then go to sleep for five hours. Um, I'm going to. I'm actually going to check here. And then we make a bet, it looks more like a buff against decent players. This would look like a trap. But um, I don't think White Porter is thinking that much. And he had pocket aces. So, yes, it worked. Probably on the flop, he would have folded. But now with the flop. I don't know what's the word, misleading, inducement. He made a pretty loose call on the third. Well, I don't know if getting through satellite change things doing in a bankroll wise <coughs> like you can play a five dollar tournament and win it and spend winning money into a ticket and say yeah I can't hear from the smaller tournament like if you play thirty three dollar tournament not a sample tournament and win it and you win let's say Three hundred fifty dollars, and then you use the three fifty to play a tournament of three fifty. You cannot think that this only cost me thirty bucks. So even the tickets are one money, but of course, if you are like Peter's not playing mostly cash games and playing tournament every now and then, then you don't need a bankroll. Come on, if you play one or two tournaments a month or week, then who cares about the bankroll? Then you have the cash chain bankroll and you can make money out of it if you want. It's your money. You can even cash out 300 and buy booze, and it would be still, it would be quite okay. Remember, bankroll management is just a tool to decrease the chance of going broke. And sometimes it's a tool to make our mental game a bit more easier. I'm going to barrel on table three when we actually hit the top pair. Oh, he mean raises. What the? We don't have anything else, so this is really strange. He's such a strange player. Uh, even if he raises with some kind of 
despair and flustered and something, we are still quite lost on the river, so I'm going to give up, but we have to check what this guy is doing. And then we have the money in with crappy aces. It's pretty much the best thing that can happen with crappy aces, unless the opponent has good aces. And he has just ace king then, so we are in quite nice shape. Unless he made something, no, he doesn't. Uh, three pairs. Let's make a bet. Let's see if he mean raises us. No, he just fold. So back row management is oh nice aces on table two. Every time when I have a something, some topic to discuss about, then things start to happen on tables. Well, but this is pretty straightforward hand. We open, everyone folds. We so back row management is just a tool. It's not a rule that you have to obey. It's just a tool to help you in your risk management. And it sounds a bit strange when someone says that, oh, I would like to play the tournament, but there's some really specific tournament that happens only once in a lifetime, or it's a satellite to satellite to live tournament somewhere you have always wanted to go and then you say or someone says that oh I cannot play that satellite what why can't we other top up I hate software sometimes <laughs> then you say that oh I, I cannot play the tournament because my bankroll management doesn't allow me to it's your bankroll management you can do whatever you want with your money you just have to think that okay if I'm not obeying my Why cannot we I don't know what the heck is going on, but Yeah, bank romance the idea sorry. Um ZP makes a really small bet. Uh, I need to raise. 140 to win 250 super prize and if it goes we have to make runner on a full half yeah background management uh artemis is at a really good point oh it's going to be a runner on a full house <laughs> oh missed by one but we beat any flop two pairs so It was a value raise. He had pocket. What the? Dude. We raised the flop and he has queen four nine nine on three eight six. What in the world is that player doing? Like on a monotone board, he throws my raise with just total air and doesn't turn it to a bluff. So. So Artemis said about macro management, it's not about risk management on property, it's also to grow in the bankroll as efficiently as possible. Yeah, that's often what people forget. And the problem is when people make too strict macro management. Uh, if the idea is to grow your bankroll, to get into higher steps as fast as possible, and then if you have a really, really strict macro management, then it takes really, really a lot of time to reach those higher states. And table two, we have the inside wrap. And now we have a bigger wrap. We have the first draw, but Queen Jack gets there. And the thing is that I'm going to. Things if I barrel and he raises, and do we need the coin? It's going to be 9 in 40. Ah, missed my chance. But the problem is that if we bet too big, then we kind of have to call. And the other option is to check call. Because then we definitely have the odds, because now his range is more than Queen Jack. If we bet and he raises, 
So now we made the straight and the flush complete. The thing is that when the flush complete, it's good card for us, because he cannot bet without the flush now, or he shouldn't. If he has a straight, he's going to check, but if he had a combo draw the turn, then he's going to snap off, and we just fall. Um, table of four, we three bet nice hand. Uh, we cannot auto top up. Why can't we? But we totally missed the board on table four, so we just have to fold. And I'm going to barrel through the river because none of the draws complete. If he goes with some crappy queen, then it sucks. And we should. At least we bet the flop, turn and river, so it looks pretty, pretty strong. And the board doesn't change, and luckily he folds. And we have top set on table one, I'm definitely going to bet it. Why cannot we add money? I mean, how can we play here? No, we are not. How can we add money when it doesn't work? Um, table one, um, Pliny is Rorschach, so he probably has the queen jack, waited for the safe turn. Now the question is, do we have equity versus queen jack? So we have to pay 12 in the pot of 46. And it's going to be... 58 or something so we definitely have we have around 24 so it's it's an easy call and he has a queen chap and we don't I mean come on yeah we had 23 percent and we need somewhere around 20 or something so it's plus if we call marginally, but we don't hit it, so we're gonna play here. I mean, I cannot give myself chips. So we have to go to Poker Stars. <laughs> oh. Sucks. Okay, now it said that I've been locked out. There's some problem. So, yeah, I don't know. The software crashed. Okay, um, and we restart it. And Cowdish is asking, is Esplo United real? Yes, it is. Each new Finnish hockey team. <coughs> well, it doesn't work. I kind of get in. Not a problem. Let's see where did we end up. Probably with the last flips. Oops. Yeah, um, here's the results for that session. One by down, break even on. Oh, in adjusted, so not great run. But let's see what we can do at Poker Stars. The old 25 ish. Oh, yeah. Let's start on the old 
Now we just have to access the tables a bit. I don't have a known settings. Okay. Oh, there's a VK44. An old friend from this. Yeah, I mean. So, let's try this one. Microgaming doesn't work. Poker stars always work. Oh, I have to. Oh, my nose. I'm table two, going to bet semi block blockers to some of the made hands. <laughs> Much rather win the pot right there than hope something to happen on the river. Um, against Dr. Crutchy. I'm definitely going to raise. If he see bet, I'm going to raise here. We have the middle pair and the wrap. Some backdoor flushes. But it's just check folds, which is nice. Trips on table one against suckout value. Seems to be a player that understands something. So betting half a pot might get nice profit. And I'm going to open a couple more tables so we should have more action. <laughs> Don't know where IBT is. He is another very nice friend. We play 44. Well, actually, out of 5,000 hands, he's not losing that much anymore. He's only minus 73 and actual he's playing break even but the thing is that he has run pretty well in some of the approachings he's kind of crazy player well vpip 62 41 3 but 14 and here we have top bear and some cut shots um i'm just going to call and let's see if we improve us. Now when he puts the turn. Now I, I don't think he's making this with pair aces. He probably has aces with the flush draw. Or some kind of king chaff type of hand. Where our soul top pair isn't that great anymore. So we can fade away. But if the turn improves our hand. Then if he puts we can get it in with nice equity. Wow, he's coming crazy today. Maybe he's tilting. Now he probably takes it in. No, with that bed size, he needs to fold it. I don't know what this guy had when he raised the flop on ace high board. Not sure why. Maybe it was a bluff. 
Because if he knows that we play doesn't have ace, he's open, but if he has any ace high hand, he's going to step off there. And if he has a strong hand that aces himself, why raise and make him fold? Or maybe he had something like ace 9, ace 3. <clears throat> that he wants to fit it in versus some ace xxx type of hands. Uh, it's been 5 8 let's draw because this green player is coming along and we create a nice 3 way pot. But we don't hit pretty much anything. Some back doors, middle pair, um, this really small bet I would have called, but now when someone raises, I'm just going to get away. So about three bet in here on table three hand is not quite strong and when we have 63, 33 of course no idea on three hands but we have three hands on here on small blinds too. So often what happens is that if we three bet they will fall anyway and then we are suddenly playing a big four way but with wide media per hand. If it was king queen jack then then definitely I would have three bet. But this king queen 9 8 is not strong enough to do that. And now we just have to wait until we get a hand or hit something. Yeah, we can face a lot. Race pro. <laughs> But if he plays break even in PL25 with those stats, then he's making a lot of money from rank back. And once again, we totally missed the board, so we're not going to fight for it. Now we have two outside tables. I'm not sure if table four is that great because we have a really active player here on our left and then VJ. Team value on the turn, uh, idea on the turn is to make a second barrel and make him fold some overburst, but he had pocket, oh he had a thin, yeah well of course you call a second barrel, he had a flush draw, but yeah this guy doesn't, doesn't like the fold, and now they're just fighting with VK44, oh dear. Set on the one he thought for a pretty long time if you're making his check. Is he playing? No, no idea how many tables he's playing, but now if he thinks for that one and raises, then uh, I would think he has jackshot lens quite, quite open. Uh, nine completes, a lot of things. Now we have, just have to check and see. Well, the third completes even more, so we are most likely to beat here. The only hand we beat is jack then without any help without 8 or king.
Uh, I would assume he backs here often and we just fall. Would be same even if we have pocket jacks because we cannot beat anything from his range. Sukim Banja and Michel seems to be pretty nice players, high DPI piece. So then high flash draw, so I'm just going to call. And one second BK four bets. Well, let's see on the button what the flop is. And flop is decent-ish. And he pots once again, so I'm just going to shove with my top pair and see what he has. And he has over pair. That kind of sucks. Well, our back draw flash came there. Not sure how much we had equity on the flop, probably we need 25 or so, we had 20, so against those actual hands it was minus EV, but against the rage is, I'm quite sure it is profitable. Uh, if it ring has high too, buddy. A lot of familiar people at Poker Stars. Poker <laughs> uh, Chaps on table one, but I don't have to treat it with pocket pairs. And now we actually make the wrap so we can semi bluff here. No one bet the flop, so they shouldn't have flushes. On the other side table, we are in a situation where we have King Jack 7, then we have top pair and cut shot versus players, and now this player thinks for a long time. And finally, he folds. I'm going to mark these guys as a green once they are quite nice. And when someone plays 8 out of 10 hands, then he's probably my friend too. And we flop nice. Top two with the flash run, let's hope VK raises us. Um, I'm actually going to check and give him room to bluff me. But I'm not going to shove. Let's just call. Oh, river is, is bad.
then completes a lot of stuff so that really looks like a value bet. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's going to have those backdoors so often. Here I'm just gonna bluff if it green ace is a nice card. Oh he took raises so he probably has has something. And we're so deep that uh, I don't want to four bet kings. And we flop the fast draw over and the cut shot. And now I'm actually going to bet just if we play raises then most often if he's not bot raising we have the equity to crawl. Now the thing is that seven doesn't complete a lot of straight, so I'm going to bluff the river. I don't think anyone calls with two pairs here. They have a lot of two pairs, flush draws type of hand. Of course, some jack nine type of hand would improve here. But we are risking 60 and a half to win 26 and almost half. So we are going to be successful quite often because our hand looks like a flop straight a lot. And they, neither one of them should have a flop straight. So what they have is some kind of draws. And here, Supreme Buck rolls. Uh, King's Jordy's, let's just see the flop. Let's enter the pot. And we hit top two and the flush draw. Nice. And let's get the money in. And we are in really good shape. And we scoop the pot on the turn. And we make the full house on the river for <clears throat> really strong hands. <laughs> Because my throat is quite sore and my nose is bleeding, all kinds of stuff, we are going to end at around 11 finish time. So we have 20 minutes to go. Next week we are going to have normal yellow at Friday, I assume. Do we have anything? No, it's the 1st of July. And then the next one, 8th of July, is out of order because I'm leaving for Spain and I'm going to be there for two weeks. So we are going to miss three Fridays. And we're going to leave pretty early on the Friday. So not sure about the coaching, the next English coaching on the week after the next one. We are probably going to have it on Wednesday. Maybe Thursday, but sorry for this constant changes in the schedules. But just see the forum, see where we are. And now we get call call three, but I'm I'm going to call. Uh, it's a rainbow, so it kind of sucks, but we can make. Pretty strong hands, and we have these call happy players, a lot of implied odds. And when the fourth country, we kind of know where we stand, so we shouldn't have any tough 
both of situations. Um, it's kind of important that when he pots against aces, we have around 45 or 50 percent equity if he trained both. But if he has aces with flush draw, we draw in pretty thin, and we have two people behind us, so we kind of call that one. So oh, he's, uh, he's just having aces, so it's kind of. I don't like that sharp versus three people. Well, often people think that, oh, SPR1, I, I need to shove my aces. But well, against three people, they're just bare over bear is in pretty bad shape most of the time. We met the nuts on the turn on level one. Let's see if we can know. We can get value. <clears throat> I'm not going to peel the flop. I'm peel the flop with a jack four four because we have this really aggressive player who might three bet and then we are suddenly in a spot where. We have to be a big board with proper hands. And now he decides to donk. We have top and bottom two pairs, some back doors up. I'm going to call and see how the hand develops. Now we have open ender and the flush draw. Um, he's either trapping us or he might have a strong hand like set that he's definitely going to call. We kind of value bet versus set. So I'm going to check here and let's see if we improve on the turn. I mean on the river, but we don't. Uh, it's kind of spot where he can bluff us because he knows we don't have a straight on the turn. But then again, what could he have? He has check seven eight, so he don't with just the top pair. Uh, I'm going to make a note out of that. And we got shot. So now I know his donkey range is not made up with strong hands. Uh, two pairs and open ender. Uh, we're less than 100 pp steep, so definitely stack off in three bet pots. We are never doing bad against anything unless he has a set of kings or things. And when he thinks he doesn't, he just folds. Pot folds. Well played. Like your bet sizing, mister. The outside table we semi bluff the flop raise versus this Tuama call and we make the set of sevens on the turn, but he doesn't call us. <laughs> and we type by three bets. White ace heavy. Uh, when his range is really ace heavy, then we can make calls, but then we have to stack off with almost any two pairs. Now we can only hope that he slow plays if he has aces and we can see the turn, but once he bets, we just fold. Uh, 
I found the don't here on number one, it's an input bot and not one of them is really aggressive. I don't think they're ever going to bluff the bot spot on this flop. So let's let's get value while we can. Outside the bot we are entering big bot and we don't make the full house. And we actually have a green high flush draw, so I am going to value bet it. I don't think he's ever going to bluff because the board doesn't change that much on the river. And we could call and see what he had. Ten eight. Oh, he made flush draw and open ender, so he makes the river. River it straight. He is, I don't know what is his name, Tumacrol, whatever this is, but he is pretty active. And I don't like, like to play three way with these guys, so. I'm going to change the table. Let's make a small eBet and just count on the folding equity we have on average. And he fold, which is nice. Let's bring this one. Two pairs. Oh, Finnish player dongs. We have top and bottom, so even versus any of his dorking range, we are not in a really great shape. I'm just going to keep up, especially out of position. And here we have two pairs, and now we pick up the flush draw two dollars into 365. Oh, definitely have to call. Um, he dunks the flop, which kind of looks like a strong ish hand. Well, let's see if he bets the river, then we just have to fold. And I wouldn't be surprised if he has pocket kings, and now he makes a half a pot bet. Not sure what he can have, but. <laughs> Hasn't been really active, so most likely suddenly when a passive player starts to be aggressive, it's because he has something. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. 10 minutes and we have aces versus high one opens and we get it in versus what eight yes small bot 
but small pot is a one pot. Now we are suddenly heads up with that guy not going to do that. So let's just let's see if we can open some better tables. There it is. It's it, this one, and we get nice position on the known regular. Funny thing that um, just uh, 15 minutes ago, uh, VK44 was his win actual win rate was zero BB per hundred, and now he lost. Um, I'm not sure how much he lost, maybe one or two buy-ins, and because of that, now his win rate is minus seven. So it's one of those things that even when we have 5,000 hands on him, now the thing is that if you check your wow, this looks so much like a bluff, but can we beat anything? Have to raise. He shouldn't have a strong hand. Oh, he has. Ah, he had a five. One of the hands that makes sense. But yeah, bluffed on the turn and made the trips on the river. Damn. That river potting was so quick that when he doesn't think at all, it, it, it's quite often a bluff. But this time it, it wasn't. And he didn't even think about the call. No. <laughs> Thing is, uh, he's so super aggressive that when I check the flop, he can bluff the turn with ton of hands, but on the river, he cannot crawl with ton of hands. A uh, problem in Demo 3 is that we have every card in our hand. We have a queen, we have seven, we have jacks. So there's not much opponent can have, but if he has a draw, we can value from his draw most likely on the turn. So that's why I want to bet the turn. Then if he calls with the draw and hits it, he might even pay us more on the river. Ace is here on level one. We are in position, so we definitely three bet. And let's see the flop. I don't know, it's amazing. If people think, like, yes, you're going to fold 10% of the hands. And yes, you're going to four bet aces. And then with the rest, you're going to crawl. So why think for half a minute if you crawl or not? It's not that hard of a decision. And here on the mode two, when we have a green player, oh, he don't for a pot, and he don't for a pot. Wow, not sure if he has aces and he wants to see the flop, and I don't know what. No, I'm going to crawl here, and I'm going to call the river. No idea what he don't with, but we lose the pocket six. And he has just a straight draw. 
For some reason, he likes to pot, pot, pot. Oh, we don't have a hut, so I'm going to make a note out of that. Three bet this is a jack jack. Most of the value comes from like the flush draw where he stacks up with weaker hands or if we hit the set of jacks. And we are quite deep with Shuck, whatever his name is. So <laughs> If we, if we really want to stack him off almost 400 pp deep, the bot has to be 3 bet or 4 bet. <coughs> Probably 4 bet or even 5 bet, who knows. But if we just call him a raised bot, he's not going to shove 400 pps on the flop without having a pretty damn strong hand. So it's really unlikely to get the stacks in with really good equity 400 pp deep in 6 max. Now, Detrus still is saying that in heads up, it's quite easy. Yeah, it's different, there's dynamics, and the reason why heads up can be so profitable is because people take it personally. Once they lose a couple of buy-ins, they just start to get it in with almost any hands. I'm, I'm going to bet here, we should have a lot of phone in equity. <laughs> And uh, I don't think anyone is going to raise us unless they have some kind of small blade stuff. And now the question is, can he fold his ace high hands? Because that's most likely what he has or some kind of same straight road as we have. Uh, table 1, 3 bet. And see, bus once again drinks for a long time. And here we can actually bet smaller. Um, when we bet smaller, the thing is that we have pretty much the same folding equity uh, against pretty much unknowns. Because they kind of go crazy, and often with that smaller bet sizing, it, it's quite suspicious. Why bet so small? Does he have pocket kings? And then when he calls or raises, we save money. And the only thing is that when he understands that we see that we air too, so he gets really good price in attacking those flops. But when we don't see him raising those flops often or at the showdown see some proper jacks, proper things type of hands, then we can definitely make a lot of money. Hasn't ever folded to a C, but <laughs> sample size of three. And we flop the nuts on table three. Let's see if we can get any action we can. Turn is pretty bad. Let's check and give him a chance to bluff us. And when he doesn't bet the turn, then he often doesn't have a restrained hand or with some kind of total air. He often has some kind of ace high hand or two pairs or something. So I'm going to bet quite a bit ish. Level 4, we turn our full house into bluff catcher, and he has just an ace high, got two streets of value. Now, type is player 3 bets, 
Mutta alankaan ei siis. Oh, the clock is 11. I'm sorry, we have only one and a half hour PO evening. At least the stream should be working pretty well. No one has complained. Wow. Queen 3-3-4. Solid hand to open from UTG and crawl and trip and get it in on the flop. I don't know why this guy is in the pot with Queen 10 5 5. Well, he has. <laughs> oh dear. I mean, come on. People get it in on the flop. He has aces. He makes the ace on the turn and. Oh dear. And we play 44. That's how he makes money. 300 pp pot. UTT open and crawl a 3 bet with queen 3 3. Side poker. Crazy table. And this Chuchuchuku is just hanging on with almost any hand. So now he actually have a hand. Double cutter and a flush draw. But don't make it. So he has lost 70 bucks in three hands. <laughs> so yes, we are going to sit out on the next big blind. And I dare to say that we made profit at Poker Stars. And the overall result should be profitable unless something happens on the last hand. So let's mark these players. This is a green one. Babirua is a green one. Nice to meet new friends. Hello, my name is Kuberi. Thank you for Kauris, Petrusno and Daniel keeping me company. And if, if you want to promote our English content, do I Petrusit or does make some post in the English forum too? Now I feel pain in my heart. I haven't done it. Although I promised on the new year to post hello hand every week. I haven't done it. I, I should be shaming myself. Make some posts and in YouTube put comments on the videos. Just say nice video man or something. It helps, everything helps. If you have a Twitter, retweet our tweets and so on. Facebook like our posts and so on and so on. Because we have a reactive Finnish side, the most active Finnish poker forum. But on the English side, we don't have that much traffic. We have those sitting pro and MDT players, but we don't have a lot of cash, cash game players. And there are a ton of PLO players looking for active forums. So. If you have any friends that play cash games, PLO, no limit, <coughs> whatever, tell them to join for Crimea. Because the PLO side is not active at any forum. I'm a member of a lot of poker forums, but can't remember one where there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, two plus two, but they have a bit more members than we do. But on the other forums, the PLO side is pretty much dead everywhere. But there's a lot of players looking for places where you can discuss about PLO and find other players. Um, we are going to sit out the next hand, so let's move the tables away and then... Ooh, run good, finally. 
here are the results 95 bucks profit so we run set three binds over AB so when we combine those minus 20 it's plus 75 which means I can tell you a ratio 55 for shareholders and yeah might be that so it's nice to have a profitable session after a long long time so up 75 around ish and plus 20 in ev2 now this is how your graph should look like of course the well the ev line is going great to our ev adjusted win rate is plus 46 per 100 which is insane so yes we we ran good and then we run even hotter in all ins and won that big three way so thank you have a great midsummer festival just stay healthy so you're alive on monday and see you all next week on friday and finish pl evening meanwhile be active and now let's watch the video and go from there have fun bye bye so you're saying i can ask this cat any question the cat is connected to the computer you just type in the question it will read his mind there the answer comes you're the man i've been looking for